Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I want to give you an overview of the effects in GarageBand. Now mostly we'll be focusing on the default provided effects in GarageBand, although you should note that you can use your own third-party audio unit effects as well. So you saw a little bit of this in the introductory video, however we'll go into it in a bit more depth now. If you want to add effects to a track, you just select it in the GarageBand interface, hit the I button down here, and it'll bring up your track info view. Now right now we're working on this Beats track here, and as you remember from the intro video, we have a variety of different effects all lined up and ready for us to use. I'm actually going to go ahead and solo our Beats track here so that you can hear what the effects are doing very clearly. Let's start out with the obvious ones that are already enabled and set to zero, the Echo and Reverb. Now both of these effects use a simple Send fader right here. The send just means how much of the effect is being applied. Right now they're both at zero, so there's no echo or reverb being applied to this Beats track. If I bring these sliders up while I play the beat back, you can hear the effects start to fade in. So those are two very easy to use effects with just one parameter each that can add a great deal of depth and character to your track. Now as you could probably hear, the echo effect was acting as a simple delay, allowing the sound to trail off in a rhythmic manner. The reverb of course is creating an artificial room around your sound to make it sound bigger in relation to the other instruments in your track. At the beginning of the effects chain there's a simple gate device. What the gate does is allow you to cut out any audio that's below the threshold as defined by this slider right here. Any audio at or above that threshold will actually get through. The practical effect that this has on your track is that it starts to chop up the audio, oftentimes in a very rhythmic and pleasing fashion. I'll go ahead and activate it now. I'll turn off the echo and reverb for the time being. As you could hear, the gate was cutting off some of the sustained phases of a few of the drums in the loop here. That can be a very pleasing effect depending on the kind of track that you're writing. Next in the track is the compressor. We took a look at this in the intro video, and as you remember its interface is very simple. However, we didn't try it out over any loops in the intro video, so let's do that now. As a reminder, the threshold value is the value at which the compression will start to kick in. This is a lot like the control on the gate here, except it works in the opposite fashion. Any audio below the threshold will actually be unaffected by the compressor. Unlike the gate, which actually cut off that audio, anything above the threshold will be compressed. The ratio is just the amount of compression that occurs. Attack is how fast or slow the compression kicks in once the audio reaches the threshold. And gain is a simple makeup gain to bring the volume back up in case the compressor is reducing the volume of your track too much. Let's try it out. The compressor is obviously very good for adding a pumping effect to your drum sounds to make them sound fuller and louder. Listen to the drums without and then with the compressor. As I adjusted that attack setting, the kick drum was coming through a lot more clearly. So as you can see, experimentation is really the name of the game here. And with the right settings, you can really make your drum tracks very full. Combining this with a little bit of echo and reverb, and you can really make some big drums. The last track-specific effects that we're going to take a look at are these four freely assignable slots right here. Here you can actually bring up effects that are installed on your system, either from third parties or from Apple. As you can see, there's quite a variety here. Let's take a look at the track echo effect. It's automatically enabled once you choose the effect. And if you come over here, you can always choose a preset. And if you click on the pencil icon, you'll bring up its editor. Now this echo effect is a lot more detailed than this hardwired echo effect on the track by default. 
Here you get to determine the amount of time that the echoes will trail off, how many times the echoes will repeat, the coloration of the echoes, that is whether the high frequencies are rolled off or not. As you move this slider to the left, more high frequencies are rolled off, thus creating a darker sound, and of course vice versa when you move the fader to the right. The echo volume simply allows you to define the gain of the echoes as they trail off, and you can also change how much of the original signal is mixed in. As you can see with the original volume parameter set at 0%, all you get is the delayed sound. Let's take a look at some other useful effects. The bit crusher effect can be a lot of fun to use. Let's take a look at some of its presets. And what this effect is doing is adjusting the bit rate of the audio in real time in a variety of interesting ways. If we look at the interface here, you can see that there are only two parameters to control here. But just these two parameters offer you a lot of control over the sound. Here you can change the bit rate resolution. And here you can adjust the sample rate reduction. Another very useful effect is the overdrive. This is basically a simple distortion unit, but with a very warm sound depending on its settings. As you can see at low settings, it's actually really good to add a lot of character and depth to the drums. If I turn it off, and then back on, You can see that it adds a lot of grittiness and depth to the drums without being overly distorted and thus risking competing with the other instrument tracks for frequency space. Now in addition to the regular track instruments, as you remember from the intro video, there are also effects on the master track. These really don't bear much explanation because they work in the same way that the track effects do. However, it's worth noting that you only have one assignable effect here rather than the four on a regular instrument track. Additionally, you have a ducker track, which is good for turning down one track when another one is playing. Now, of course, you might be wondering, how do you change the behavior of these effects over time? And you can actually do that in GarageBand through its relatively powerful automation editor, which we'll take a look at in the next video. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative.